When flying, one of the scariest thoughts is a malfunction or something outside that can cause damage to the plane. We've talked previously on the channel about some people's fears, myths, and tips when passing through turbulence. In this video, we're taking a closer look at flying through the rain. Most people are terrified to fly through rain, fearing the heavy water falling on the aircraft or even lightning hitting the jet, but there's no need to worry. We're diving into the engineering and tips that'll help you overcome this fear. So, how do planes fly in the rain? The wings and engines of today's aircraft work together to produce lift, which moves the plane upward off the ground by changing the direction and pressure of the air. In general, rain does not impede this process. Rainfall is generally not enough to keep a plane from taking off. This is true both when it comes to takeoff and when a plane is at cruising altitude, usually around 35,000 feet, since most rain occurs at lower levels of the atmosphere. This is why skies outside an airplane are typically clear, even if the weather on the ground is rainy or overcast. Starting at the beginning, while taking off is not completely shut down in the rain, the intensity of the precipitation can affect the process. Typically, light rain doesn't make much difference for the aircraft. Most planes have advanced equipment and technology to make climbing to higher altitudes during light rain, even at night, easier. Light rain also doesn't come with other weather conditions like thunderstorms. In heavy rain, it is most likely for your aircraft to take off, even if it is preferable not to. While heavy rainfall does not threaten aircraft security in most cases, it is often followed by other weather phenomena, like thunderstorms and fast winds, which can damage aircraft and make flying difficult. Taking off during thunderstorms and strong winds is generally discouraged due to safety risks, although it isn't prohibited. Aircraft also have to receive a specific certification for flying through heavy rain and specific equipment that prevents water from entering important airplane components. Small planes will have the most significant difficulty when traveling through rain, especially heavy rain, because of low visibility and the need for the necessary equipment to fly in these conditions. Small aircraft also need help landing on wet runways and flying with fast winds. Yet, some private jets are fully equipped and can make the flight. Large airplanes don't have the same problems. They typically don't have any trouble flying under the rain, as they are all equipped with advanced technology and use data from the ATC to take off and land under poor weather conditions quickly. That doesn't mean this won't be a problem in any case, like the Canadian Carrier Transport Canada case in which an Airbus A220 suddenly stopped working after a rainfall. An investigation found water got into the avionics bay. That caused a short circuit, tripping a circuit breaker and leading to an engine shutdown. It was found that water got in during a rainstorm while the main cabin entry door was open. The drains overflowed and the water dripped into the avionics bay. The airworthiness directive requires A220 operators to install blanking plates on certain drains and block off the associated drain tubing to prevent any water from getting into the avionics bay in the future. Operators must do this by removing existing forward galley slotted drain covers replacing them with solid blanking plates and blocking off the associated drain tubing. Even if there is some malfunction due to rain, the regulatory authorities are often working to improve the safety of the flights. Now we've seen that planes are hardly disturbed by rain even if it's a heavy precipitation day, but heavy rain does not come alone. Lightning usually brings one of the most scary phenomena, even on the ground. Have you ever wondered what happens when lightning strikes a plane? Down on the ground, whenever we hear thunder or see that flash in the sky, we're taught to get out of the swimming pool, stop playing golf, and never shelter under a tree. But how about when you're stuck on a metal flying transport unit up thousands of feet in the air? The truth is that being in a plane during an electrical storm is not dangerous, as aircraft are built to withstand lightning strikes. Most large airlines, especially during the warm summer months, see their planes struck by lightning on multiple occasions yearly. Because of the uneven air that can cause turbulence, wind and reduced visibility, 
pilots will do everything they can to avoid flying through thunderstorms. However, sometimes, especially when a storm is near the airport, flying through storms cannot be avoided. You need warm and cold air to create electricity in the sky. As the warm air which contains water droplets meets the colder air which holds ice crystals, the rubbing of the two creates static electricity. Like a battery, the clouds have both a plus and a minus end. The plus particles are at the top of the cloud and the negative charge is at the bottom. When the charge at the bottom is strong enough, the cloud releases its energy as lightning. The lightning then passes through the air seeking out a negative charge in another cloud or a spot on the ground. During the lightning, the air is heated up, which causes the sound that we call thunder. Most lightning strikes on aircraft happen at an altitude of 5,000 to 15,000 feet as the aircraft takes off or lands. They usually occur on the front side of the cockpit, with the aluminium edge of the cockpit window attracting the charge. Because engineers know how lightning works, aircraft are built to withstand it. The lightning will, for example, strike below the cockpit window and then travel through the outer metal of the plane before being discharged. The electricity then exits the plane into the atmosphere from either the aircraft's wings or tail. Most aircraft have small sticks on parts of the wings and tail, known as static wicks, designed to conduct lightning safely away from the aircraft. As a passenger on an airplane struck by lightning, you may hear a loud bang followed by a bright flash. While this might scare you, there is nothing to worry about as the plane is safe. The pilots will ensure that their radios and other electronic devices work correctly after a lightning strike. After the plane lands, technical staff will be told of the lightning strike and a thorough investigation of the aircraft will be done. They're looking for damage to the rivets and the plane's surface. Any damage found is repaired and the plane can resume flying. In some cases, however, not everything goes smoothly. An American Airlines Boeing 787 Dreamliner was struck by lightning and damaged its fuselage after the incident. The aircraft operated as American Airlines Flight 60 from Tokyo Narita Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. It is unclear when the plane was struck by lightning during its nearly 11-hour journey back to the US. November 839er Alpha Alpha is currently at a maintenance hangar at DFW Airport as it undergoes repairs, according to social media. The aircraft was delivered to American in October 2018. According to View from the Wing, it has been over 40 years since a crash has been attributed to a lightning strike as the strong fuselage of the plane conducts electricity and generally transmits the strike out of the tail. Despite a strong and thick fuselage, the 787 reportedly has a known issue with lightning strikes. In 2019, Boeing reduced lightning protection in the wings of some 787s to reduce costs and speed up deliveries, but the company reportedly said that safety was not compromised. In May, a Jetstar 787 was grounded after extensive damage from a lightning strike. On average, every commercial plane is struck by lightning at least once a year, which means even when an airplane shows a lightning scar, it doesn't apply to all cases and becomes an exception. The external parts of most commercial aircraft are made of metal and are thick enough to withstand a lightning strike. The fuselage is the primary defense, as the surface is sufficient to shield the plane's interior from lightning strikes. The metal skin also prevents electromagnetic energy from entering the airplane's electrical system and wiring. It does not stop all electromagnetic radiation from entering the electrical wire, but keeps it manageable. After everything went well at the high altitude, it's time to land. While commercial passenger jets can take off and land perfectly safe when it's raining, in some circumstances the aircraft may not be able to land while it is raining very heavily. This isn't because of the rain itself, but rather the cause and effect of the heavy rain. Hefty rain can indicate some other weather phenomena, some already discussed in this video, and pilots are trained to avoid them. Low visibility is one of the most likely reasons an aircraft cannot land while raining. For most of the flight, the pilots use the aircraft's instruments to fly the plane and only revert to visual references shortly before landing usually for about the final 500 feet. 
therefore moderately reduced visibility due to heavy rain isn't a problem. However, to land the aircraft manually, the pilots require a horizontal visibility of 550 meters. If the rain is extremely heavy, visibility may reduce to below this level. This requires the pilots to carry out an auto land where the aircraft touches down with the autopilot engaged. Some aircraft and airports do not have the facilities to support an auto land, and therefore landing at the affected airport may not be possible. As for thunderstorms while landing, flying directly through or near a thunderstorm can result in wind shear. Wind shear is the sudden change in direction or velocity of the wind. If an aircraft encounters this, it can result in control difficulties and even result in the aircraft stalling. Pilots will therefore avoid flying near thunderstorms where possible. This would include delaying the approach and landing phase if a thunderstorm overheads the airport. Thunderstorms also produce microbursts, resulting in a powerful current of downward air that can push the aircraft toward the ground or result in a very rapid change in the aircraft's airspeed. Microbursts can be associated with heavy rain showers. Heavy rainfall can also cause the runway to flood or be compromised. While most aircraft can travel through water on the runway to a certain depth, it can get too deep. If it gets too deep, the plane cannot break sufficiently to stop the aircraft when landing. If necessary, the pilots would receive regular updates on the state of the runway and delay landing. Like almost every popular belief regarding aircraft safety while flying, rain isn't the big villain people are so afraid of. Of course, things can become harder to deal with, or a malfunction or any other technical problem can happen, as an airplane is a mechanical creature. Still, these are not something to be scared of, since it rarely happens, and there are many people involved to ensure you will take off and land safely. Not only during the flight, but also backstage, professionals are working to improve the aircraft and make the flying experience not so terrifying. What do you think when passing through the rain while flying? Do you have a story about flying in the rain? Tell us in the comments. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.